friend Mr. Milimo, who represents the speaker, to shoot up to his feet and protest loudly that his client is not a, vac a vacuum. Because the Constitution says, when, um, I think it is, uh, yeah, this is Article 146, sub Article 2, B. If the office of Deputy President is vacant, or the Deputy President is unable to assume the office of President, the Speaker of the National Assembly shall act as President, and an election to the office of the President shall be held within 60 days after the vacancy arose in the office of the President. Two things to note there. In that article, the framers of the Constitution contemplated a vacuum in both the presidency and the deputy presidency. And it is at this point where my good friend Mr. Milimo says his client, Anatosha. <laughs> no, 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 my Lord, I'm not saying that. Uh, <laughs> maybe you'll say it. <laughs> I, I am almost certain in, in, in the event that my good friend Mr. Kamotho described here a few days ago when he said the president might go to where people don't come back from, that uh, we will all say we're turning Atosha. He did, he did. The, the record says so. Yeah, uh, but we understood him. He was not wishing uh, ill. So that's the first thing. The second thing, my lord, is that they contemplated we can operate for 60 days, two months, without either a president or a deputy president. The world will not collapse. Kenyans made adequate arrangements for the caretaker while those two are not with us. And there seems to be something magical about these 60 days that Kenyans clearly had. Because under Article 149.1, when the Deputy President is impeached or there is incapacity, the President has 14 days to nominate a candidate to the National Assembly. That is number one. And because it is not obvious, or it is not a matter of course, that the National Assembly will approve that candidate, it must be contemplated that the National Assembly can refuse to vote for that candidate. So those 14 days can be repeated, which is what the Constitution says. If Parliament rejects the first candidate, the process is repeated again. And the Constitution seems to contemplate, can be repeated almost indefinitely, until the President comes up with a name that is acceptable. So that is number one. And there's, there's no crisis. There'll be, the world will not end as Parliament rejects those candidates. So that's number one. But the President having nominated a candidate, the National Assembly itself has then another 60 days. So we, we can again operate as a country for 60 days without a Deputy President. And so I return to what the Supreme Court said in the Sonko case, we must do and has not been done, has not been afforded to our client, the Deputy President. This is what the court says. This is the Supreme Court again at Article 114. And it's interesting because what had happened in the Sonko case, the court actually found that Sonko was not properly before it. But they then said, they converted the proceedings into an advisory opinion. So they're actually giving this as a template for courts, such as this Honorable Court, to follow. At call 114, I mean paragraph 114. To the question whether due process was followed in the removal of the appellant, the Audi Alteram Patem rule requires that those who are likely to be directly affected by the outcome of a decision should be given prior notification of the action. So they, they give a whole list of what must be done. Prior notification of the action proposed to be taken of, of the time and place of any hearing that is to be conducted and of the charge or case they will be called upon to meet. They must be given an opportunity to be heard. Now, it is not a matter in dispute that on the night the Senate, I and my colleagues on both sides were present in the Senate, our client was taken ill. I have subsequently read in the newspapers he had a broken heart for good reason. So he is taken ill and the Senate then takes a vote. And this was important because the Senate had two days left even in their own self-prescribed time limits. 
they voted, and this was not an electronic vote, they voted on acclamation to reject a motion to extend time for the deputy president to appear uh, uh, in Lord, court. My lord, if I may, I, I am compelled to interrupt. My lord, learned counsel is misleading the court. When on a feed of it, it is clear that the Senate votes electronically. Senate does not vote by acclamation. I do not know what paragraph is addressing himself. Perhaps he can point to the court to the paragraph he's addressing himself to on the question of acclamation. We can't just sit back and watch Mr. Masharia mislead the court. I was personally there. Senior Counsel Muita was there. The entire team, most of them were there. On the question of extension of time, it was by acclamation. All the eyes and all the nose, that's what it was. And the senator was loud. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and, uh, and uh, I would ask him to please uh, wait. He'll be a bit more bothered when I finish with my submission, so he can be bothered fully when I finish. So this is what the court says. They must be given an opportunity to be heard to call witnesses, to be represented by counsel, to be availed adequate time and facilities to prepare, and if the accusations are proved, to be given the reasons. This is important. The Supreme Court says you must be given reasons for your decision. The 